I'm John Bollinger with Premier Guitar. We're third in Lindsley in Nashville, Tennessee, a few hours before the G Love and Special Saw Show. And we're with Mr. G Love himself, Garrett Dutton. Thanks for joining us, man. Hey, John. Good to see you. Yeah. Hey, man, tell me about that very cool guitar. Well, this is my signature black and blue um, Airline 59 three pickup reissue. Uh, it's made by Eastwood Guitars. Um, I met Mike Robinson, who owns Eastwood Guitars, and also this really cool website called MyRareGuitars.com, oh. which has a lot of old pawn shop guitars in it. Anyhow, um, we talked about doing a signature series with him, with Mike, and um, uh, the 59 Airline 3 pickups, just a hell of a guitar. It's got plenty of knobs on it which I like and it's got a real funky line to it it's got the Bigsby pickup um, yeah beautiful so you got volume and tone for each of the three pickups and then all your different blends of the pickups and the master volume here that's just great man it's uh it, it's like one of those guitars that uh, to me I, I really fell in love with it instantly because it has like the gritty feel yeah. of an old you know pawn shop garage guitar and uh but it also has a lot of sustain uh similar to a les paul or something oh, like cool. that so to me it had the best of both wor worlds from you know kind of some of the old guitars i was collecting and also some of the ones i like to play on stage like my les pauls and stuff like that so when we talked about making the signature series um i wanted to kind of go back and um, kind of make a modern day update right. with enough funkiness of this guitar, which is my old, I don't know, 50s or 60s Echo um, guitar. Yeah, Italian made, right? It's Italian made guitar. And uh, I've had a number of these over the years some, I made I made my first a lot of my records with this guitar and of course I had it on the road for 20 years so obviously we wanted to get the color of these two guitars so that's why we went with the blue oh yeah sparkle finish to kind of yeah it's beautiful do that and uh, we went this one has the back as the white mother toilet seat yeah and this one we decided to go with that kind of white bumper so it's got its own flavor but you can see the uh comparison this was kind of the inspiration for the color scheme for the black and blue yeah so this is like a much more dependable version of those funky old pawn shop ones yeah, you like yeah exactly yeah. yeah but this guitar uh has been with me a while this this one in particular is probably a combination of a couple different ones over the years uh some fans have found these guitars and sometimes they'll sh bring them to shows and say hey i have one of those guitars and i'll say hey can i buy it so uh that's great. It's been remade, and uh, we we keep it running one way or another. Of course, it's it's changed. You can see we've drilled out the original pickup. I mean, the original bridge and put a new bridge in. Yeah, two pneumatic. It's got different knobs on it and stuff. Does any of this stuff even work actually, anymore? Actually, no. We we actually hardwired this because th these are uh, really funky. But if you look at the inside of it, they're basically just like plastic nibs with just a little metal connector on it yeah so the they're, they're not, after like I sweat a lot when I play and they just get corroded constantly so I basically would always use the all setting all four pickups and so or the bass and treble so we just hardwired it a switch here in between those two oh. pickups so yeah, this is uh the Cruccinelli, Cruccinelli which is the name of the guy I, I'm guessing who made it it, and is it part of the Echo family? Yeah, I think know? is that I think this guitar in particular was the was an Echo guitar maker that maybe went off and did his own oh, brand cool. called Cruccinelli. Huh. I don't know, but that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, cool. So yeah, this is my 1970 Les Paul. I think it's pretty uh, pretty 
much untouched. I don't know though. I, I got it at Guitar Center. Actually, Jimmy Jazz went with me one day. We were in LA and uh, this was like the first kind of real electric guitar I bought after we got our deal and we're on the road for a couple years. Yeah. And this is, this is a great guitar. Actually, I record a lot of my new record with this one. Um, you know, it's a Les Paul. It's got great sustain. The other Les Paul I have is a is like a 98 custom shop uh, cream finished um, guitar I got here in Nashville oh, cool. at the custom shop one time. Ben Harper and I went over and took a tour and they had that one up in the shop so I bought that. But this one I have on the road right now and it's just a great workhorse of a guitar. It always sounds good. Yeah. You know, it's a Les Paul, man. It's the real deal. Yeah, 1970 yeah. Les Paul Custom. That's great. Great. And then uh, moving along over here, this is a, a Black Falcon, uh, one of Gretsch's, you know, classic guitars. This is a reissue of an older one. Uh, I got this from Gretsch a couple of years back. And I used this one during the show uh, for most of my slide guitar work, my electric slide guitar work. Uh, it's just got a, you know, you could see the body on it. It's, it's nice yeah. and thick. It's a hollow body. It's got a screaming blues tone. And it Do just, you have any uh, feedback problems when you're playing at volume with, with that? Um, or do you kind of like that? I like that. I mean, not, yeah, yeah it doesn't become a problem because that's kind of <laughs> what I'm going for yeah, with this. Right. I definitely, in the show tonight, you see I turn this one way up because I, we do the uh, our new singles called Nothing Quite Like Home. And I used this on the record and I use this one on the show to play that one and crank it up and put on the blues driver and cool. kick the shit out of some blues. <laughs> no, are, you, are you in standard tuning on that? Or on, uh? on this particular, I, I, on this show I'm doing this guitar mostly in open G. Cool. Uh, and my slide stuff that I play, I, I usually am in open G or open D. Great. All right, this is uh, this is really cool. Actually, I got this yesterday in Atlanta. Oh, cool. And I used it last night on the show for the first time. As you can see, it's an old oil. It's a new oil can guitar. This guy uh, is making them in Atlanta, and his company is called uh, Bohemia Guitars. And uh, you can find them online. But this is just a lot of fun. I mean, it's really cool. It's it's got a good neck on it too, so it sounds good. Yeah. And I plugged it in, man, and it really screamed. Uh, I don't know, it's just basic. That's what I like. Yeah. And uh, it's basic and it's funky and it's gritty. And uh, I, I used it last night on the show for, uh, I do one, one solo number and um, I used this last night, so I'm gonna use it again tonight. I yep. liked it. And I Very cool. So just cool. one pickup, one pickup, tone, volume. You see the bottle caps there. Yeah, on bottle the, caps. Uh, that's great. Pretty sick. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. All right, and over here, this is definitely a real, real beautiful instrument. Uh, this is a newer tricone. Uh, National Resophonic guitar. People call them a National or a Dobro. This one is a National. It's got a steel body. Um, so it's tricone, meaning that every Dobro or National has a cone, or in this case, three cones, which basically, if you were to take this all apart, uh, it's, it looks like kind of a hubcap. It sits on some bracing and uh, it gives the guitar a unique feel because um, as an acoustic resonates through the wood, this one kind of resonates and vibrates on that resonator plate. So you get like a metallic, almost electric sounding tone, but it's acoustic. So it's yeah. almost like, a, you know, almost like a banjo and a guitar put together or something. But it really and, cuts too. And, yeah, in fact, it's it's just a unique tone. It's all to itself. So uh, it's actually not a Fisherman pickup. It's a Highlander pickup, and actually, it's it's a uh, and and the pickups uh, 
what is it, non-active, so it needs a power supply, right? Um, anyhow, th uh, this is a great guitar. I, I use it, I, I don't really, really use it on the special sauce shows too much, but on this show, we're using it because we're doing the whole first record. Oh, cool. And I used, on the recording of the first record, I used my 1939 wooden dobro on a lot of that record, and uh, this is just a little bit more ready to go stage-wise than that one. And, and you're running it into an amp and DI, is that right? Yeah, we run it in an amp and a DI. And we just have, uh, it's got these cool, uh, not quite F holes, but sound holes that come out here, but we had taped them up uh, just during the solo shows to be able to get a little more juice through the monitor. I have yeah. a little feedback issue. So anyway, this is a uh, National Tricone Resonator guitar. It's awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, let's, uh, let's talk about your pedal board. Okay. Well, um, it's a pedal board designed for me by my amazing guitar tech, Frank Big Scrimp Caraccia. <laughs> um, we've been working together, I don't know, for five or six years now, something like that. Um, yeah, Frank really is able to dial it in. Um, so we start out with the wah wah, basic crybaby. Um, I don't use that too much. The, the the main pedals that that I use for effects. Well, I'm just kind of a plug in and play guy. And yeah. originally, um, my amp of choice was this old '60s Ampeg Rocket Reverb Two, and on that amp. If you know the old Ampegs, they have an amazing tremolo and an amazing reverb. So that was basically all the effects I ever used till the last 10 years or so. Um, so a big part of my sound has always been tremolo. And um, on this board, we've chose the Electro Harmonic Wiggler, which has a, a, a unique sound. It doesn't sound like an Ampeg Rocket Reverb tremolo, but it has its own tremolo vibe and uh, it's a sturdy and it's pedal. it's tube driven, right? It's tube driven and it's got this um, guard on the tubes which is good for me because I have big feet and I stomp them <laughs> <laughs> and I'm all over the stage so my pedals have to be rough and tough and, and not going to break. Um, the other electro harmonics pedal I really love a lot is the Qtron and this has kind of been one of my go-to soloing effects uh, it's an envelope filter and it really screams, especially when I put in a combination of that with this blues driver pedal and I click on these two things and then it's like, watch out, I can just rip your head off, you know? <laughs> and uh, you can really get a good boost out of that. So I also have a digital delay on here, which I used on some of the kind of more ethereal numbers just to get a little more spaced out. I don't use it that much. I, I also have this flanger on here. Same thing, I, I use that. I might just put that on for just one chord sustain on the whole show. And then kind of at the end of the show, if, if we're getting heated up, I'll just turn on all the pedals and walk off the stage and leave everything screaming. Just uh, rah, rah, yeah. rah, rah. <laughs> uh, And then the two other pedals that are kind of always on are these two compressor pedals that we use this Kesley compressor and then this RC booster made by Exotic Effects and uh, we kind of use a blend of these two compressor and the compressor and the boost just to give just to boost the uh, signals of the electric guitars mm -hmm. um, just that you know just to kind of give a little extra oomph going into the amp out of the guitar itself a little more presence and clarity and punch. So sure. uh, that's kind of the the and rig. Oh, and then over here I have um, the Voodoo Lab amp selector. Um, and uh, I usually run two amps on stage, my J20 and the Fender DeVille. Um, you know, again, the, the J20 is an Ampeg and it's a smaller tube amp get a little more grit out of that and a little more of a clean tone out of the DeVille which is a little physically bigger amp. Uh, 
So we have a nice blend of those too. You know? Yeah. Um, now, do you run your Dobro through this as well as your electric? Or? Yeah, and then I, I, you see right here I have this Highlander um, external power box that goes with that Highlander pickup for the National. So, yeah, we actually do. We run the um, the National through the DI into a clean DI chain out to my sound guy, and then we also run it through this rig because sometimes I'll put a, a little wiggler on that um, vibrato on that... Uh, on that Dobro as well. Yeah, cool. And your acoustic, uh, does that run just straight through a DI or do you? My acoustic, I usually do the same thing. I'll run it straight through a DI, but I also run it through the rig in case I want a little extra presence yeah. on stage from uh, an amplifier. Yeah, and a little um, grit on it. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, that's that's the rig. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's to me, it's just, it's perfect. I, you know, it's not, it has just enough of a palette for me to be able to mix up the sounds during the show, to be able to really get a lot of tone and volume when it's time for me to rip a solo. Um, and uh, But in general, the, the sound that you're going to hear out of me is a combination of those two amps and these compressor and this booster. That's yeah. the sound that you're going to get. And then I spice it up when I feel it's time to spice it up with my nice palate. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay, let's hear about these amps. All right, well, um, you know, like I said, uh, when we first started the band, I used this Ampeg Reverber Rocket 2. Uh, and then over the years, I had a couple of those on the road, and I also had a Gemini on the road. Um, you know, but the road's tough on gear, especially old vintage amps, so... Uh, we reconnected with Ampeg a number of years back. Actually, Ampeg's gone through a lot of ownership changes in the last 10 or 15 years, but we seem to have reconnected with them every time, which has been great. Um, my main uh, electric guitar amp is this J20, which is a tube amp. What does it got? One 12 inch speaker in there, Frank? It's got one 12, it's all hand wound. It's a hell of an amp. Uh, for me, it's great because our stage setup is intimate, um, and I'm able to get a really great tone and not have to have super intense volume. And that, to me, is what it's all about, yeah. getting a great tone and not having to be too loud, although I do like to be louder than my drummer would like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, up here we... we uh, oh, then also, so my other... My electric also runs through this Fender DeVille as well which is just a great workhorse of an amp, of course. Everybody knows how great Fender amps are. And that's a great amp. Um, so the combination of a cleaner tone on the DeVille and a little bit more of a dirty old school sound on the Ampeg is just perfect for what I'm doing. Yeah, great. Uh, okay, up here uh, we run the, the, elec the Acoustic National or the Acoustic J45 through this... Um, Ampeg Super Jet right here, and you know all these amps are just so classic. And here's the one we run the Bullet Mic, which I use both for vocals and electric harmonica, and we run this through this uh, Jet too. Um, and again, these are just some great. This 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 a 10 inch speaker on on that? Oh, they're all 12s. 12s. Yeah, so they're all 12 inch speakers. You know, there's the body sizes are a little different the amps. They're all hand wound tube, just great amps. And you you split this signal too to uh, um, to, the, to the PA as well. Oh yeah, the bullet mic goes through the PA as well, so you can get a little clean, and then uh, we get it coming off the stage. So the bullet Honer Green Bullet, not a big part of my sound, especially in a lot of my early recordings. Like yeah. I did a lot of the vocals. You, like I'd use an old, not a green bullet, but like an old microphone I found at some pawn shop. Um, and I'd use that and also like a C12, which is a really high-end studio mic, and blend those two sounds. So to me it's all about like taking in this old, gritty, cheap sounds and yeah. blending them with some more high-end, reliable stuff. And I think that's a good recipe. And then there's just the rest of my stuff, the harmonica, which is my main deal. 
And then I uh, have a harmonica rack right here. Can you bend notes when you're on a when you have a holder on? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's the whole thing about it. I mean, My whole thing came from like learning John Hammond stuff and uh, you know like that was my whole thing as a guitar player was to take the rack guitar and the, the, sorry, the acoustic guitar and the rack harmonica to a level that wasn't just straight folk coffee house type yeah. stuff. And yeah, I mean I can play everything even better on the rack than wow. I can with my hands I think. Um, look, mom, no hands. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty much the rig. And then over here, I got Entertainer Secret for all you vocalists out there. It's just a good uh, glycerin and aloe vera spray for your vocal cords. And, and uh, Dunlop uh, brass slides. Yeah, I, I use uh, brass for my picks, picks. I use uh, I use my Dunlop thumb pick. Um, and then, and then I also use Dunlap finger picks sometimes. I always use the thumb pick, and I use the finger picks. Um, for instance, if I've been off tour for a minute and my calluses on my two other picking fingers aren't really hardened up yet, I will go lean on these picks. I use the picks when I'm playing this dobro, yeah, because the National is kind of a stiff guitar. Um, but for the electric tone I'm using now, just the thumb pick and these two ones. And now I use a heavy brass slide. Um, I use Honer Marine Band harmonicas. And these are my G Love Canon Blues Master Shades. <laughs> Great. Well, hey, man, thanks so much for joining us today. Hope you have a killer tour. And uh, thanks, been really informative. Thanks, John. Appreciate right. it, man. All right. Uh, I'm here with Jim Prescott, the bass player for G Love and Special Sauce. Jim, thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks, man. Hey, man, tell me about this very cool bass. Well, this is, uh, we just got this. This is a Chadwick uh, folding bass. And uh, I, just, I just put it together there. But basically, what happens is the whole uh, neck and all folds right back into the into the back of the bass, and it uh, the bridge comes off and the fingerboard comes off and it wow. folds up into a nice neat package for flying. How easy cool! Travel. How's it? Does it sound different than your regular upright? Uh, you know, it's uh, it's it's really it's great for this for this gig. We're we're amplifying it. Yeah. You know, I I wouldn't I probably wouldn't use it on an acoustic gig. Sure. Um, it has a little. There's, there's stuff in there to hold, you know, all that mechanical stuff. So there, there are some vibrations and yeah. stuff that you don't really notice when it's, uh, you know, amped up for the G Love show. Right. So a little bit of a compromise, but it makes it way easier to travel. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, they won't, they won't let my old bass on the plane. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, 9-11. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, great. Hey, now tell me, uh, so how's your signal flow? You go from... From your bass. Well, on the bass, I got two pickups, uh, and this is a Bezel. It's a coil, a coil pickup. Uh, it's kind of like based on the old rockabilly trick, which is to tape a couple P bass pickups there on the on the end of the fingerboard. Oh, really? But this this is a nice uh, design. It's got adjustable uh, poles on each of the uh, uh, strings, and I tune that in around the uh, Fishman BP100 here which uh, has a lot of like bright kind of wood tones. Hmm. So I kind of use this for like the more low end. So blend like them. Real solid. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm actually running, uh, I run two, two chords to it and then oh. uh, I got two amps going. Okay, uh, so Jim, tell me about the, uh, the amps. So for the, for the top, I got the, uh, this Eden uh, World Tour 800 and uh, that drives the, uh, the 210 uh, with, from the Fishman uh, BP100 pickup. And then the, the uh, coil pickup I run through this Ampeg. Uh, that's usually it's a, that's an Eden 2, but I run that into the uh, SVT cabinet. For your darker, rumblier yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, that's the low end. It has a lot more, uh, you know, gain before feedback and yeah. stuff like that. So, cool, yeah. simple. Can't mess it up, man. You can't mess it up, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, I just, I don't really EQ too much. I just pull out, 
you know, feedback frequencies and yeah. a, lot, a little of the click on the uh, piezoelectric pickup. Sure. And, Great. Jim, thanks so much, man. Have well, a great you. show and great tour. All right. Thanks a lot.